Wow, there, that's what I'm looking for. You can see a major difference in the bottom where it's dark to light. That's the hard bottom and you can see all these rocks on top of it. So what I'm doing, I saw this point and I figured there might be some hard bottom, the bulrushes there. So I'm kind of just driving around seeing where the rock in the, the hard bottom is and making and dropping some waypoints because the spot's actually not on the map. That way these waypoints will show up up front when I'm on the trolling motor and I can keep my cast in the right zone where that rock is because it's summertime in the Midwest and bluegills are done spawning and as soon as that happens the bass like to get on the rocks and it's one of my favorite ways to catch them. So this is just kind of the first step is to is to do a little reconnaissance on the front side. You've got some waypoints to base things off and you're gonna be more efficient. You're gonna be fishing where the fish should be. They might not be here, but I've got a pretty good inkling. This is some amazing looking rock. This looks like a really good spot, at least a starting point. Kind of go from there, but I'm gonna start with a crankbait. It's a crankbait's a great bait to get down quick. You reel it, you, you burn it through there, you get them to react, and you're usually gonna catch some aggressive fish if they're there. That's what I'm thinking right here, and I think I've got it laid out well enough that I can start making some casts. See what happens. sure I had three bites on that cast. I think I found a good cast. It's kind of the, the fun part about a crankbait is you cover so much water and it you can feel your way around. You can feel so well, you know, if it gets hung in the, in the weeds or if you're hitting a rock. Yeah, there he is. Got him. It just it took a few casts to kind of figure out where they weren't out on the, the big rocks that were way off the weed line. They're definitely tighter to the the weeds, but wow. Just nothing, nothing, nothing and feeling my way around almost ready to think about trying another spot. And then boom, three bites in one cast. <laughs> they were just teeing off on it and then threw right back in and got another bite. So Awesome, it's fun. Summertime cranking. So now that I kind of have a, an idea where at least those bites were and that fish came from, now I kind of want to keep that point of reference and make that cast again. And the longer I fish it, the more I'll figure it out, but I think they're just kind of tighter to the grass where the rock meets the grass and they're not just kind of out on that, the rock flat that looked really good. If they're, they're brown buddies, the smallmouth were in here, I could see those guys hanging out by some of those boulders more, but, and these fish might, you know, an hour from now, they might move out there tomorrow or whatever, you never know. But my general thought with a crankbait, especially when I'm just kind of figuring out where I'm at and what's going on, make a super long cast and crank it down quick and just burn it through there. They're either gonna get out of the way or they're gonna bite it. There's one. There's a bass. Nice. Nice little guy. So part of the part of my plan today is to find a group of them. It's kind of the fun part about summer is the fish will get schooled up and you can really get into them. So once you, if you get a bite, you want to make sure you look around to see if there's a group. So not a big one, but 
it's a bite, it's a bass, that's a good sign. So now, make another cast. Let's hope. You kind of keep doing this and eventually it pays off and you get, you just get into the mother load of them, just a whole nest of them. And an efficient way to do this, where you can kind of stay put when you want to, kind of park, is go into the wind. It's a good strategy when you're fishing, you have better boat control going into the wind. Now, granted, I have to cast into the wind, but if you get your reel set up, it's, it's actually, it's not that bad. And we don't have much of a breeze today, but just enough to orient the boat. But when I want to stop, see I get a bite, I hit spot lock, I want to park, and I'll, the nose will park right into the wind, so I really, truly stay put. And I'm just, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm kind of on top of this, oh, wow, he creamed it. So right there, I got a bite, I'm in a spot lock right away. And he bit it, it was on its way down. It's a good sign that he caught, he came up to grab it. A little better fish too. Oh, Whew. boy! That hook, that front, the belly hook is in his mouth. That's usually he came up to eat that thing. He wasn't messing around. So let's see. That is a good indicator that he's got some buddies. I mean, he bit it. <laughs> he hammered it. <laughs> Almost ripped the rod out of my hand. But what I was saying is I'm kind of on top of that edge. I'm trying to keep the boat pretty much where I think the fish are. And just keep following it and casting ahead of the boat. So I also get a sense if I'm going over fish that there are fish and they're just not biting, but kind of helps me stay in line and keep your cast because what I'm seeing is the fish are near the weeds and deep weeds and a deep crankbait are a little bit tricky so you kind of want to just just tickle that outside edge there's a fish there's a <laughs> that's kind of cool Oh, he got me in the weeds. I gotta get him out of there. Man, I got hung up in this in this the deep weeds, and I could tell it was just mushy. So I went snap, snap to snap it out of the weeds. And as soon as it came free, he must have grabbed it. And holy cow, is this one strong? Oh, I hooked him a little weird. That's why. All right. Boy, they pull really, they pull a lot harder when you don't hook them right in the mouth where they're, where you're supposed to. That, <laughs> the weeds he was sitting by right on the edge of the rocks. That's a nice, fat, healthy fish. Wow. Nice green, it's like coontail. Take those all day. Now he was actually on the, getting close to the tip of a point and it's the wind blown tip of the point. So that is a logical spot for some fish to be. Hopefully he's got a bunch of buddies. That's what I'm really hoping to find. It's a big school of them. So let's check it out. What I'm hoping to do is to show you what my kind of a, a nuts and bolts, three pronged approach to catching these summertime bass that's kind of locating them with the crankbait, certainly catching them with it, and oftentimes some of the biggest fish right away, but once they calm down and they're not biting and you know there's more there, it's to try some other baits, like the swim bait, wear them out on that, and then the, the cleanup hitter is the Nico rig. A Nico rig or a Ned rig, some, some type of a finesse worm. Boy, they, they have a hard time turning that down. There he is, oh God, <laughs> that was cool. I, I felt grass and I just kind of feathered it. I gave it a second to float up over the grass and gave it a couple of cranks and 
he, oh, he creamed it. Look at that. Oof. Oh, he's got a buddy with him too. Of course, it's probably a pound bigger. That's how it always works. But heck, this is a this is a nice fish. Got him. There we go. Man, another nice healthy fish. Summertime cranking. Well, his buddy was definitely bigger. So now I know there's more there, right? Like he, I could see him <laughs> with my eyeballs. All right, here we go, fish. Oh, there he is. Got him. Now, this is what I was looking for, so let's, I don't want to jinx myself, but, oh. now that they seem to be biting, I'm going to get right back in there. You may have heard the term getting the school fired up. It's a very real thing, and the fish are just in a, kind of in a lather eating a lot of times, so you want to get back in there while they're biting. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wow, that fish was high in the water. That's interesting. Man, it feels like a nice fish. Another nice, healthy bass. Boy. I feel like when I'm getting around them, they're biting really well. Boy, that's a pretty one. All right. Oh. When they bite it, they are biting it. My gosh. That is a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. It's an acrobat. Yeah. Can I just get him in the boat? Yeah, he wanted that, boy. Just a really nice average fish. Gosh, I've been waiting all summer to do this. This is fun. One thing, so this is a, a 16 foot diving crankbait. It's a pretty good sized bait. And when you're getting a crankbait down that deep, it takes quite a bit of line, you know, just the dive curve of the bait. If you want to launch it, you want to throw it out there as far as you can. What helps with that is a big long rod. Not a heavy rod, you like, it's a very parabolic, which is, could be like a cranking rod, but this is a 711, so you can really whip it. I mean, fire it way out there. That way your bait's gonna be down on the bottom where you want it for more, more distance than a shorter cast. It's, it may not even, reach its maximum running depth. So you wanna make sure you're giving the bait a chance to get down where it needs to be. And having a nice long rod makes that a lot easier. I think I, there, it seems like there's some over there, Rick. I just was missing it. Oh yeah, he's jumping way out there. Free willy here. So now this is 
we've been trying to figure out and find is a school of fish. So there they are. That's probably three or four in a, and that many casts. See if my system works that I wanted to talk about here. Make a few more with this. If they don't, if I don't have any more bites, I'll switch right, switch it up to that swim bait. And there are other things you can do, of course. You can change colors is always a good option with crankbaits. So I always fish it with a snap. It makes it real easy to change colors. And a lot of times that'll trigger them. Or actually one of the, a cool thing I've played with a fair bit is adding one of the bladed hybrid trebles, which gives it some flash. And that'll, that can get them fired up too. That swim bait bite is really fun. It's kind of a system that I got to work on with Jacob Wheeler, which is this particular jig head with this four inch swim bait, kind of a finesse swim baiting, I guess, if you will, and it is deadly. It's deadly. One of my takeaways is if Jacob Wheeler says it works, it probably works. <laughs> so throw that guy out there, let it hit bottom. And this is a similar, I actually have the same line. I have 12 pound fluorocarbon on that, both crankbaits, the 10 and the 16 foot crankbait, and then also this, this swim bait. And it's just a nice, nice system that fluorocarbon has quite a bit of stretch, you know, very actually in line with mono, but that whole system. And when you get a bite, you don't want to like, you know, set the hook like a jig or anything. You just kind of want to lean into them and let that hook penetrate their mouth. But this, this system works really well. You'd hardly ever lose them. So this style of fishing is very effective, but a critical element of it is, is modern day electronics. It's just a reality. You could absolutely go catch fish without it in different scenarios or maybe here, but it helps you stay productive. Your bait's in the right spot, right? I can look at whether it's active target or my 2D or the 360 is, is incredible to really see the, you know, as I'm, it's just constantly spinning. So I can see that edge, but a hundred feet around my boat and that allows me to just be productive. It is it is what it is. You can't argue with it. You don't have to have it to go catch fish, but to, to do this and fish a specific spot like this, it really helps. It makes life a lot easier, more enjoyable. You're just gonna catch more fish. So that all ties into graphing these with, with side imaging to find those edges and see how the spots lay out. You know, mapping is, it's usually very good, but it's not always exact. So it's nice to kind of drop your own waypoints and make sure you're fishing exactly where you want to be. There he is. <laughs> that was cool. Oh, it's a big one too. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's the biggest one yet. Oh, yeah, wow. Oh, look, yes. Yeah, buddy, come here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> there it is. Pop it out of there. Boy, that's a beautiful fish. Four inch swim bait. After they quiet it, quiet it down off the crankbait, it's a really nice, a lot more subtle, not much sound at all, just a visual deal. And it's working. Boy, I wonder if there's more like that. I will take those all day long. You just load into them like that. Oh, it's a big one. Come on, buddy. <laughs> He's not gigantic. I finally listened to myself and stopped trying to rip their head off. Yeah, and just like that. When you do it, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I finally did it right. That's cool. 
Yeah, so there are more fish here. And they're liking the swim bait. Gosh, it's a fun bite. It's fun to just catch them on different lures. They just bite everything different and it's just fun. We'll see how many more. We'll keep biting this. Now that I know that, like, I kind of know where they're at, right? So I caught some on a crankbait, catch a few on a swim bait. We'll see how long they'll go. And then mop them up with a worm. That's, we'll see if the fish read the script. I don't know. They don't always read the book. They're supposed to, the rules they're supposed to follow, but there he is. Is feisty. Yeah. Come here, buddy. <laughs> Look at that. That is fun. Gosh. You know, I just wanted something a little bit more subtle. Boy, they're pretty fish. All right. See you, buddy. It took a few casts to get that fish, so I'm kind of wearing them down a little bit. I think they're getting a little bit sick of me. It might be worm 30 pretty quick. This could be a pretty textbook deal. I know there's... Some more fish. I'll throw a worm in there. This is a... It's actually a Nico rig, so it's a straight tail worm with a, um, a weight on one side of it. And then it's, I've got it Nico rigged. So the hook's in line with the worm and it's just a, never go fishing without a Nico rig or a wacky worm, you know, it's just a, it's just something they're gonna bite no matter how tough it gets. Oh, there's a, there he is, yeah. There it is, the cleanup hitter. The Nico rig. Always good to throw after you've been catching them. There's all, almost always, there's gonna be a few more fish. They have a tough time saying no to a worm. Oh, there's a bite. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, wonder if I've caught the big ones on the other baits. Sometimes that's the case, but not always. Oh, it's a bite. You just kind of reel down with this thing and just kind of lean into, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Wow, yeah, I didn't catch all the big ones in those baits. This is a nice one. Sheesh. Let's see this guy here. That, that is a nice bass. The cleanup crew, the worm here. Look at that, cool. That's the system. Out deep, this rock to weed transition. You can do the same up shallow with shallower diving crankbaits and swim baits. And of course, a Nico rig, probably one of the most universal lures on planet Earth. You can skip it under docks, throw it shallow, throw it deep. But it works. It's kind of a three pronged summertime bassin approach that is pretty foolproof. If you've got this kind of an environment with weeds and rocks, it's uh, most days it works. The proof's in the pudding there, so cool. Thanks, buddy.